All right, we're going to look at 5.5 next, which is graph of sine and cosines. Uh, to be able to do this, we're going to understand the graph of sine of x, so graph variations of sine of x. Understand the graph of cosine of x, graph variations of cosine of x. Use vertical shifts uh, of sine and cosine, and model periodic behavior. Should be fun. Here we go. Uh, for starters, we're going to write down basically the, the general uh, function for each of these. And this isn't the first time we've looked at something like this. Uh, we know what the effects. Oops, I was just about to write that down. So those are basically the two general uh, forms of the sine and cosine graph. Uh, we know kind of what A, B, a C, and D already do to our graph. And we're going to look at basically how that uh, applies to the graphs we're about to talk about. All right. Uh, first things first. These graphs are what we call wave functions, and what that means, they're periodic graphs. Uh, and in these periodic graphs, what happens is it's going to be a repeated type pattern. So uh, certain wave functions that you guys may have studied in different classes have certain characteristics. And one thing we're going to talk about is uh, their amplitude. Since it's a wave function, it has an amplitude. And uh, basically what an amplitude is, it's half the distance from top to bottom. So it's half the distance from the top to the bottom of our graph. And the way we calculate our amplitude is real easy. Uh, obviously, what's going to affect the uh, vertical shape of our graph is going to be A. So we're going to take the absolute value of A. Now, if you notice in the general form, a is the coefficient of the trig function. So it's important that you understand that because if you don't know how to find a, you won't be able to take the absolute value of it. The reason we're going to take the absolute value of it is because it's a measure of distance. And you know distance always has to be positive. So we'll just take the absolute value of a, and that will give us our amplitude. And we'll see when we start to graph it how, what, how and what effect that has on our graph. Next, we're going to talk about our period. All right. Next, we're going to talk about our period. It's basically the time it uh, the time it takes to complete one cycle. <laughs> oh, it's early. One cycle. Uh, it's basically before it starts to repeat. And the way we're going to do this is to find your period. You're going to take two pi and divide it by b. Now, just a heads up, b is the coefficient of our x. So a is the coefficient of our trig function, b is the coefficient of our x. So make sure you're aware of those things when we look at them, because uh, again, if you don't know what they are, it's going to be hard to find. Let's see, copy. Probably should have written this down beforehand, but that's okay. Uh, next, we're going to find our phase shift. Just a couple things. Uh, hopefully what you should remember is B and X are going to affect the horizontal part of your graph. B is going to cause it to shrink or stretch, and C is going to shift it left or right. So we find our phase shift. Uh, what we're actually doing is we're going to solve this inequality right here. Why would I put a 2? I don't know what B is yet. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. So when you solve for x, we would add c and then divide by b. So this is going to be c divided by b is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to, uh, here we'll get 2 pi plus c divided all by b. So once we set up our inequality, we'll solve it. And what this information tells us this is going to tell us this is where we start our graph. 
and this is where we're going to end. Now, one thing that you should know <coughs> is the distance between these two has to actually be our period. So whatever we get when we uh, calculate our period is what we're going to get um, the distance between these two. Because the period is how long it takes for our graph to repeat its cycle. Okay, So if we start here and we end here, the distance between these two things has to be the period. If for some reason you don't get the right answer, um, that is not the same distance, then you probably calculated something wrong. And then last one, are we going to find our divisions? between the values on the x-axis. All right, our divisions are basically our period divided by 4, and that's going to be the space between the value on the x-axis. So that's actually what we're going to count by. So it should be good. Uh, we'll see if we can't look at it here a little bit later when we actually get into graphic. Uh, that kind of wraps up everything. The thing that we haven't talked about is D. And D is basically a vertical shift. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. It's going to be our vertical shift. So what we'll do is we'll actually get an idea of where our graph is. And then after we uh, have graphed our graph, we'll basically move it up or down based on what your vertical shift is. One last thing I need to tell you about this stuff is the patterns. So let's see if we can't look at it. Uh, positive sign. So if you have... A being positive, sign will go like this, zero, maximum, zero, minimum, zero. A negative A, uh, based on what we should know, it's going to cause it to reflect about the x-axis. So what was a maximum will now become a minimum, uh, and what was a minimum now becomes a maximum. Positive cosine, the pattern is a little bit different, so whoops, we're going to start at our maximum value. And then go to zero, and then our minimum, and then go to zero, and then our maximum. And then negative cosine. Uh, again, a negative A is going to cause us to reflect about the x-axis. So our patterns will look like that. And we'll look at how we use that here uh, when we start to do some examples.